beautiful place, isn't it? The San Francisco Bay Area. Whoever first decided to settle here must have been a poet. And if everybody in this world was as smart as he thinks he is, well, this would be the most populated community on earth. Thank the good Lord, the world is full of dumbbells. Here in our little colony, you know, we got only the best. We have poets, artists, philosophers. <laughs> How's it going, George? Good morning, Captain. Hi, Captain. What you got there? Oh, this is a block of driftwood. We're going to do a little whittling. Artist George is, you know. He paints nudes. In plain talk, naked women. Most men, when they go out to paint nudes, they, I don't know, they hop out and grab themselves a naked model. Not George. That's his own wife who's posing for him. That's his own legal wife. <laughs> kind of hard to figure out that kind of reasoning. <laughs> Are you talking to me, sir? No, I'm not talking to you. Ever, ever since that movie show, Tom Jones, people think other people are looking out and talking to them. Why should I talk to him? Oh, this is a fine place to live. <laughs> now, you stoned this boat when she was in service. When I sold it to the professor six years back, I didn't lose a home. I gained a family. <laughs> Ahoy, Tina! Ahoy, Captain. <laughs> That's the professor's wife, Vina. She's as pretty as the sunset. Keeps us all on an even keel, too. Him, me, and the two kids. <laughs> Leaf is his name. You know, the famous poet, Professor Leaf. He teaches over at the university. <laughs> now all the folks around... Oh, I'm sorry, Compass. Now all the folks around here are his students, or his ex-students, or just plain admirers. And there's lots to admire about Professor Leaf, including his temper. <laughs> he teaches the English poetry course over at the University of Coronia. That's one of the biggest in the West. The professor complains that the school's more interested in their science department than in their arts. Robert, your attitude is me and yes. damn science dean Sawyer, I've had it. Just because they got the world's biggest uranium-fueled nuclear power plant smack dab in the middle of the campus. He sure hates that power plant and all that goes with it. I don't care how smart they are, how many degrees they've got. Oh, that nuclear gadget of theirs works on the drawing board. An accident is still an accident, and sooner or later they're going to blow us all to hell and gone out of here. It's only a question of time before one of those fellows shows up some morning with a hangover and pulls the wrong switch or puts too much uranium in the plutonium and... Wow! Don't think I didn't tell him so, either. What's wrong, Professor? If I were President of the United States, do you know the first law I proposed to Congress? No, sir, I don't, and that's a fact. I'd propose a law that would make it a penitentiary offense to invent anything that you couldn't uninvent if it turned out to be a mistake. <laughs> well, I'll drink to that one, Professor. Robert, <laughs> Robert, don't tell me you resigned again. No, dear, I did not resign again. Well, what are you doing bringing home all your books again? Well, uh, there was a faculty meeting, dear. Voice memory in California. <laughs> Captain, if you must talk to yourself, go someplace else and talk. You're always talking to yourself. Oh, Darling, well, I... tell me what happened. Well, I'm positive I didn't resign, Vina. I, I admit that I started to. I even put it down on a piece of paper, but I didn't... Darling, re... you didn't get into a fight, did you? I certainly did not get into a fight. I simply told the man that we didn't intend to let science push the rest of us off the sidewalk. And if he ever, if he ever tried to put the squeeze on the English poetry course, I personally make it my business to tear him apart! Well, now, what about your Dylan Thomas lecture? Oh, dang it. What, what time is it? What, what? Nearly six bells. Six bells. What, what's that in the Well, that's, that's three o'clock, darling. You've just mm. got time to make it. W wouldn't it be faster by car? Not 
thought you had the car today. You know, that man once won a Pulitzer Prize for poetry, and then he forgot to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> No matter how many crises the professor has during the day, when evening gets here, he finds solace in music. <laughs> Everybody around here loves the Leafs family concerts. <laughs> I used to love them myself before the boy took up the cello. We men in the family. Nothing wrong, nothing like that. It's just that I, I was thinking uh, we had quite a few little bloopers this evening, didn't we? Did you notice them too? Here and there, yeah, here and there. That's just nothing too serious. I, the finest musicians in the world had a clinker now and then, but I, we're not professionals. We're simply a family that happens to love music, wouldn't you say so? Yes, sir. Well, that's all that really matters, son. That's all that matters, to love it. And it doesn't matter how many mistakes you make, as long as you've got it here. And you know what this is. Your shirt. No, it's your heart. It's your heart, and as long as you've got it here, that's all that matters. And we've got it here, you and Mom and Pam and me, haven't we? Hearts? Well, yeah, sometimes it seems to me that this whole world today is divided up between the people who've got hearts and the people who haven't. You mean like the good guys and the bad guys? Well, that's a very good way to put it, son. Yeah, the, the good, good guys and the bad guys. And we want to be the good guys, don't we? Yes, sir. Sure we do. And as I say, they're making a few mistakes. That's not important. What's really important is, are we trying? Are we making an honest effort, an effort from the heart, like practicing enough? I think so. Well, then, what about all those bloopers? She couldn't help it. Who couldn't help it? Penny. Well, son, I'm not sure I'm, I'm following you. You're mad because she made all those mistakes, aren't you? Because she made all those mistakes? She was trying very hard, Dad. Uh, you don't think you made any? No, sir. Not tonight. None at all. You said it was good, didn't you? What's wrong? Now, uh, Raz, I want you to... to listen. Listen to this. Gee, Dad, I didn't know 
you could play the piano? What was that? My country tis of thee. What did you think of the way I played it? Oh, that was great, Dad. That was just super. Thanks a lot. Well, it's about time for bed, isn't it, son? Yes, sir. Don't say anything to Penny about it, will you, Daddy? She tries so hard. I won't say a word. I won't say a word. Good night, Daddy. Good night, son. Oops, I nearly forgot my jello. Come I spilled my pipe on him. I gotta get me a fireproof dog. Come Come Honey, what I want you to do tomorrow morning, I want you to go into town and buy Erasmus some paints and brushes and canvas. What's this? I just found out what's wrong with his cello playing. He's tone deaf. Oh, no. Well, either that or he just naturally likes the bad notes better than the good ones. Darling, I'm sorry. No, but we're, we're not going to give up on this thing. Just a wonderful little boy we've got there. A really outstanding little fella. Now, if we can just find out what he's outstanding at. And if it isn't music, maybe it's art. Supposing it isn't art. All right, then we'll try literature. As soon as he learns how to spell. If it's not literature, we could try um, architecture. Sure. And the philosophy? Sure. And flamenco dancing? Sure. Now, this is no joke, honey. And besides, we're not going to make the same mistake with Raz that we did with Panny. Just give up. Oh, naturally not. Panny was only a little girl. What? Well, you don't catch a, a father taking the same trouble with his daughter. Heaven forbid. But if it's his son, the work. Well, what are you talking about? I couldn't love Panny anymore if she were my own daughter. And whose prey do you think she is? No, I didn't mean that. I You've mean never that. shown that concern about her. Well, in other ways, I have. And besides, how are you going to make an artist out of a girl who in the third grade decided to make it her sole aim in life to marry a millionaire? You know she's only kidding. Oh, no, I'm not! We're not talking to you. You just show me a millionaire and you'll see whether I'm kidding or not. This is Cornelius Vanderbilt calling. I'd like to talk to Miss Pandora Leaf regarding matrimony. You keep out of this, George. Yeah, George, put some clothes on your wife and go to bed. <laughs> okay. I'm, uh, I'm sorry I said that about Panny. I, I know she didn't mean it. I hope you didn't mean it about Erasmus either. He's so little, darling, and so sweet. Do we have to push him just yet? Now, look, honey, I, uh, I never did pretend to know anything about girls, but you're talking about boys, now that's something else again. I happen to have been one myself, and I'm telling you that this is exactly the age to lend him a hand in his development. You see, this little mind of his, it's just awakening, and all around life is calling, and it tries to answer, but it can't because it's bewildered and confused. This is that magical moment of childish innocence when he just doesn't yet know what he wants. I would like to kiss you good night. Five years from now, there'll be nothing on this campus but scientists. Nothing but scientists, as far as the eye can see. As far as the eye can see. 
and all that old-fashioned jazz that used to clutter up a college like literature and philosophy and art. Forget it! Forget it! It'll be as dead as the minuet. And in, instead of studying man and his dreams of beauty, everybody will be working on a machine that smokes Virginia hams electronically. <laughs> or makes a hand lay eggs like a machine gun. Boom, 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 like a machine gun. And then maybe there's a great big whopper. A machine that does so much, so fast, that it automatically throws a million men out of work by this afternoon at 5 o'clock. This afternoon at 5 o'clock. Personally, I don't want to fly from San Francisco to New York in an hour with my stomach hung up over Denver someplace. I don't want to do that. <laughs> you tell him, Prof. I don't want to do that. But what's going to happen to us five years from today? Huh? What? I, I said, what about us five years from now? Well, if you mean by us, the crackpots that think that a sonnet by Shakespeare is worth more than 500 scientists sitting around on the moon wondering how they're going to get home, I, I guess we'll just stay here until they're all up there, and then we'll resume where sanity left off. I guess, uh, I guess that's what's going to happen to us. <laughs> Why the cab? You leave the wagon in town? Something happened? The wagon break down? Wagon? What? Well, where's that note that being pinned on your lapel this morning? Oh, I don't know. Eh? Don't give him a ride home because he has the car today. Dang it. Hey! Hey, taxi! Robert! Stop. Can you please come here? Well, I left the car over over. But over this the... is important, love. Come on in. <laughs> He's the only man I know who sends candy to his father on Mother's Day. <laughs> oh, good afternoon, Miss Ava. Hi, Raz. Well, has this young fellow been acting up in class? Oh, no, indeed, Professor. Not Erasmus. Would you explain to my husband exactly what happened? It was really amazing. I was standing... I think it would be better if you told him exactly the same way as you told me. Well, uh, this was Erasmus' first day in the third grade, you know. And we have arithmetic right after the noon recess. Well, I was standing at the board giving the class a rather difficult multiplication problem. Let's see who gets the answer first. 108. Now, Erasmus, is that nice? You know we must look in the back of the book. I haven't got a book. All right, then, let's try this one. 2,414. You mean you did that in your head? I don't know. In that case, young man, let's see you try this one. Well, you can imagine my astonishment. Yes, yes, I can. Without the faintest shadow of a doubt, he's a true prodigy, a true mathematical prodigy. Uh-huh. Well, I thought you and Mrs. Leaf would like to know at once. Well, that yes, was most thanks. thoughtful Thank of you. I'd better hurry now if I'm to catch Dean Sawyer before he leaves. You don't mean you're going to tell him. And, oh, will he be happy. Miss Eva, yes? I wonder, do you think we could keep this a secret? You don't mean from Dean Sawyer, do you? Well, yeah, if, if, if just for a little while, while we study the situation. Now, as you know better than anybody else, this could have a very important bearing on the whole of the rest of his life. Now, now if we could feel free to come to you for advice from time to time, oh, wouldn't you? you must. And you're quite right. It's the child we've got to think of first, not the mathematician. Yes, that, that's right, exactly. And I knew you'd understand, and I, we appreciate this very much. My lips... I see you. Thank you, Miss Eva. Bye now. We... Bye. Bye, Miss Eva. Well, as you certainly, you certainly 
Yeah, what, what, is, it, is it some sort of a trick or something? No, sir. Well, then how'd you do it? I don't know. Oh, uh, some sort of a trick, you yeah. know. Because I couldn't move it. Like, even Mom, she couldn't... How much is 1,726 times 8,726? 15,061,076. Is that right? Oh, uh, uh, that's pretty good, Raz. But, but I want to tell you something. I don't want you to do it anymore. Because if they find out about this, do you know what they're going to say? No, sir. They'll say, there goes that Erasmus Leaf. He's a mathematician. Gosh. And we don't want that, do we? No, sir. Of course not. Of course we don't. So we'll just keep this our own little closely guarded family secret, huh? That's a point. Mina! Mina! Where's your mother? I think she's downstairs, isn't she? What are you doing? Nothing. Well, don't do it so close together. Thanks, sir. Lena! Carol, give me the other. Now, just a minute, Donnie. I'm going to give Miss Choice either print a full retraction of the whole nonsense in the next issue. Yes, but it's me. true. Yes, who is it? What did what'd you, what'd you say? It's true. Hello? What, the headlines, the story? Hello, Hello who it's is true. it? Are you there, aren't you? Hello? Hello? What do you want? You call me, what do you want? No, you don't bother me, I'm busy. When, when it happened, I had no idea they were going to print it in let, the newspaper. Let's, let's not panic. Now, let's, let's just keep calm and uh, let's... Uh, Examine the situation uh, coolly. All right. Now, what 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 happened? It was the afternoon that that I went to buy the paints for Erasmus, and we stopped by the bank to cash a check, and they were just getting ready to close. There we are. I'll be right back. $12 too much. Well, I'll just have to fire our bookkeeper, won't I, young man? Yes, sir. <laughs> All set. Off we go. Your son was just pointing out that our balance is an error. Oh, well, then that's quite possible. $1,012 too much. Mm -hmm. I'd advise you to call the attention of your manager to that. I am the manager, Mrs. Uh... And Leaf, uh, if Erasmus found a mistake... Mrs. Leaf, if housewives kept their checkbooks as well balanced, we in banking would have very... We're little... not discussing housewives' balances, Mr. Manager. We're discussing yours. And if my son says that you're in error, there's a very strong possibility that you are in error. My dear lady, I don't know how bankers in England operate, but here in America we have... In England, my dear sir, the bankers are acutely aware of the fact that the young people of today are the banking customers of tomorrow. And they make every effort to instill confidence both in their management and in their arithmetic. Uh, have you a copy of this statement in there? Yes, sir. Run it through the machine again. Yes, sir. It's in the bottom bunch of numbers. Fortunately, Mrs. Leaf, we are in a position to give you a prompt and exact tabulation of these figures, which I trust will instill you and Erasmus with the confidence you obviously had in the Bayshore National Bank when you opened your account in this branch. Excuse me. Can we go now, Mom? Don't you want to wait and see if you're right? How much? 1,012. It was 1,012. Mm, poor 
poor kid. That poor spooky little kid. Well, you're not going to. My son's only eight years old, and that's entirely too young to be mixed up in all this publicity. Your son is new. And we want to see him. Well, I've told you that you're not going to see him. Ah, uh, come on, Professor. We just want to talk to the kid. Now, look, I'm through talking, and the first one of you that tries to board this vessel is going to have to answer to this. You got a license for that gun? <laughs> I not only have a license to this gun, but as commanding officer of this boat, registry number 592777, it's my duty to use this gun for the defense of my ship against pirates and against anybody that tries to board this ship illegally. Now, come on, get out of there. Now, cut it out, you nut. Uh, now, come on, Professor, we just want to talk. Come on, beat it. The, the safety's on. No. Darling, there's a call from New York. Will you take it? All right, but, but you fellas, I warn you not to make any sudden move. This friend of mine's a hysteric. I'll take care of him. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Professor. This is Harvard Associates. Harvard? That's right. Now, without thinking, just off the top of your head, what is your reaction to this title? Ready? What title? Beat the Kid. Beat the what? Beat the Kid. I, 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 I think I must have missed something. The idea is this, Professor. Each week, Erasmus would face a panel of top mathematicians, physicists, biochemists... What for? Well, I throw out a problem. A clock ticks, tick, 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 and the eggheads try to beat the kid. He couldn't the possibly do it. That's, like that's that. the most ridiculous thing most I've ridiculous ever... ridiculous if we feed him the answers ahead of time. Say, did you say Harvard? That's right. Edgar Harvard. I package TV shows. Why, you... Scoundrel! Well, like that ought to be taken out. Exactly. That gun, that safety. Yeah? Dad, um, I know that you're working, but Kenneth and I have just had the most marvelous idea. You'll never guess what, what it is. What, what, what is it? Look. What's that? It's red. Red? Isn't it gorgeous? George painted it next door. Was well, he run out of canvas? No, uh -uh. this is just a sample. You know, Kenny works part-time at Sears. Well, we're going to go into business and sell them the Erasmus Leaf sweatshirt. One dollar a piece. Get rid of it. Get rid, rid of it? Well, you can't ignore an absolutely fantastic idea like this to make money. You don't know how much you can make from a deal like this, Dad. Now, Penny, there is absolutely no deal in which I would sanction your brother's countenance to sop up the body fluids of countless sweaty little boys. But, Daddy, how can you be like that? Like what? What's so special about Raz? I mean, Beethoven can do it. What's Beethoven got to do with it? Well, well you know, sir, the Beethoven sweatshirts. Yeah. Huh? Ludwig von Beethoven on a sweatshirt? Uh-huh, and Brahms, too. I don't believe it. Yes. Well, sir, we saw a lot of them at Sears, and Brahms is very big at Stanford. Now, wait a minute. Wait, listen to me, both of you. Now, I've been sitting here for hours trying to complete one single line of poetry. One single line of poetry. And I'm afraid that I just am not going to be able to find the words, because the only word I can think of right now is sweatshirt. Now, take that thing out and burn it. Yes, sir. You're passing up a fortune, that's what you're doing. First the TV show, and then Life magazine, and Look, and the World's Fair. No wonder we've never had anything. And with that attitude, you know, we'll just never, ever have anything. Oh, Penny. Like a new car, and a real house with a garage to put it in. And a new dress for the prom. Pandora. And Dora. <laughs> I'm sorry, Penny. I'm, I'm really keenly sorry if you feel I've failed to provide for my family. Danny, I do love you, but you're just so darn square! Is the whole world going mad? It always has been, darling. It's just that you've never noticed it. 
raising kids is such a darn hard business. It's a shame that just anybody is allowed to do it. You know, they ought to have a license for the job, like plumbers and teachers. <laughs> fellows that understand everything you're saying, even though you don't know what you're talking about. Robert, don't you think you're overdoing the situation a bit? I mean, I know how unhappy you must be. Your son, a mathematician. Our son. And, and I can imagine the kidding you're getting at school. No, I don't have anything to do with it. Doesn't have anything to do with it, believe me. Honey, in this world today, there are two cultures, the humanities and science. Now, this happens to be where the road forks for our son. Now, what are we going to do? Are we going to help him choose a way, or aren't we going to help him choose a way? That's just, just as simple as that. There's, there's Dr. Volker. Oh, well, he's a nut. What? Well, it just looks like one. All the really good ones do. Do you want me to call him? I think maybe you better. I think maybe you better call him. Ah, good morning, Mrs. Lee. Good morning, Doctor. Erasmus, this is Dr. Volker. Good morning, Erasmus. Good morning. Now, I'm going to leave you both alone so that you can uh, talk about things together. What things? You just leave that up to the doctor and lie on the couch. Oh, no, no, not with children. Never on the couch. Never. Well, you just tell the doctor whatever he wants to know, and I'll be right outside waiting for you. Thank you, Mrs. Leave. Please sit down, young man. So. You are interested in numbers? No, sir. But your mother said so on the telephone. About mathematics? Calculations? What are you interested in, then? Bridget Bardot. What did you say? Bridget Bardot. You better lie on the couch. One more now, Raz. Oh, no more mortgage. I want 50 cents. Well, half a buck. Don't be greedy. Give him a quarter. Here, try it for a buck. Deal? Deal. Okay, now pay close attention. An elevator in a 60-story building makes the following trips, starting from the first floor. Up 20 floors, down 4. Up 8, down 3. Down 17, up 10. Down 1, up 5. Up 11, down 22. Where is the elevator now? Seventh floor. Good. Okay. Next one. What kind of a kid is that? Why well, haven't you heard about my brother? Oh, Raz here is our answer to IBM, a human computer. All you have to do is drop the jazz in the slot and bingo. Listen. Ready? Okay. If a pilgrim father had bought a bond worth one dollar the day he landed at Plymouth Rock, and if that bond bore compound interest at 5% per year, how much would that one dollar bond be worth today? Well, he has to know when that was. Oh, 
December 16, 1620. $18,532,311.42. Say, that's a very useful kid. You ever try him on anything practical? Like what? Well, if you have nothing better to do later, I have an idea that might present a point or two of interest for both of us. Good. A gallon of certain varnish covers 225 square foot of surface. Did you finish the dishes already, young man? Patty's taking my turn. Oh, you switch weeks, huh? No, but she'll do anything for money. Excuse me, Captain. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. How you doing, Raz? This is Orville. Remember him? Hi. Hi, kid. How are you? Oh, man. Here you go. Okay. Shoot. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, in the first race, it's six furlongs. The purse is $2,000 for three-year-olds. Mm -hmm. Mom, Dad, Kim is here. Uh, do you mind? All right, Penny, but not for long. Okay, my homework is all done. Hey, that, that boyfriend of Penny's, Conrad? Kenneth, darling. Kenneth, darling. Does he have any dough? No. It's really rather tragic. She'd set her heart on marrying a zillionaire, and now she's fallen for a pauper. Well, the reason I asked, I saw him in a new car this afternoon. But, of course, I suppose that's the way it is with paupers these days. No, it couldn't have been his, because he's working his way through school, clerking at Sears Roebuck. You sure pay well. <clears throat> Do you think we could uh, drop romance for a bit? Well, there's no way to drop romance for a bit. Come here. Dean uh, Sawyer called this afternoon. Uh -huh. He just wondered whether a few of the uh, math professors could uh, have a little chat with the rest. No, 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 no. Well, well, I said yes. Not a chance. Do you, do you realize what this means? I do. They're going to stick him into that experimental school of theirs, the one where they train the little junior exploders to be tomorrow's big exploders. Now, just get on the telephone and tell them you've made a mistake. Now, Robert, does it ever occur to you that Erasmus is half mine? No, no, but that's the wrong attitude. And I don't mind telling you that I'm going to let them test my heart. Well, they're not going to touch my hat. If my son is exceptional in some way, I want to find out all it's I can about it. wrong way to be exceptional. Well, for you, maybe. But speaking for myself, I'd rather be the mother of a good mathematician than a lousy artist. Oh, well, now, that's just not fair, Vina. Now, he's just starting out in his artwork. How can you possibly well, tell? Well, I can. The first thing he painted was the American flag. I'd like you to see it. He's colorblind. He's colorblind. First, he's tone deaf. Now, he's colorblind. What next? So now you want to marry Miss Bardot, hmm? Yes, sir. Why? I love her. I see. More than anybody else in the whole world. Tell me, my boy, you hate your mother? Oh, no, sir. You love her? Yes, sir. You want to marry her? No, sir. Why not? She's pretty, too, isn't she? Yes, sir, but she's already married. Aha! You hate your father! No, sir, but I don't want to marry him, either. That's sensible. I just want to clearly understood, Dean Sawyer, that I'm allowing this exploitation of my son under strong protest. Again, Robert, this is not an exploitation of the lad. This is merely a comparative study. No, but I just want to clearly understood that no matter what the outcome, you're not going to transfer this boy into that little experimental school of yours. No. The junior exploder. No, Robert. I just want to clearly understood, that's all. All right, let's get this over with. Well, here's our little genius. Good old Professor and Mrs. Lee, of course, Doctor. Of course. And, uh, now, if you're ready, I'm sure Erasmus is, aren't you, my boy? Ready for what? The doctor just wants to ask you some questions, darling. And if you can't answer them, just say so, son. It's perfectly all right. Do the best you can. I want a dollar. Oh, no dollars, son. Now, come on, come on. Then I won't let my head work. Here you are. Wait, right. wait a minute, wait a minute, Dane. Here, here you are. There's a the dollar. Acts like his sister. All right, Ben Schlag, let's have the first one. <laughs> yes. Young men, into this electronic computer we have fed the following data. The nearest star to our Earth is Proxima Centauri. It takes four years and three months for light from the star to reach us here. 
and light travels at the speed of 186,000 miles a second. Now then, when Dr. Gold activates the machine, it will tell us how long it will take a space rocket traveling at the speed of 22,000 miles an hour to reach that star. Can you give us the answer, Erasmus? One hundred and twenty-nine thousand, three hundred and fifty-four years, one hundred and ninety-nine days, two hours, ten minutes, and fifty-four seconds. is absolutely right, sir. And twice as fast. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Incredible. Boys and That's all. Come on, son. Oh, no, not yet. Please. This could have been an accident. Accident? But one more, if you don't mind. Will you excuse us? I would like to have uh, Erasmus and the machine divide 17 trillion, 590 billion, 38 million, 552 thousand, and 578 by 680. It can't. The computer? No, sir. But 680 won't go into it even. Well, we'll see. How in the world did you... The only numbers that'll go into it are 8,191 and 2,147,483,647. Those are the only ones. Can we go now? That's all. That's all. Dr. Lee, may I impose for a moment? The State Highway oh, no, Department... No, 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 it means... No, no, no. Now, if you'll please leave, all of you. <laughs> Darling, it's their office. Oh. I got your summons, Dean Sawyer. Obviously. Professor Leaf, this is Lieutenant Rink of the... Oh, no, you don't. Oh, no. Now, no offense, Lieutenant, but I've taken this stand for the protection of my son. And Defense Department or Lieutenant no... Lieutenant Rink is not with the Department of Defense. You can, you can call me irresponsible, call me an old fossil, downright un-American. Will you please be seated and allow us now, to listen, say no, something? No, you sit down here, all of you. The whole crowd of you. Now, what you, wanted, what you want me to do is to exploit my boy. Now, what none of you seem to realize is what's happening to Erasmus. Ever since this whole weird phenomenon started revealing itself, this poor kid has been withdrawing into himself, and something's happening to him, which very frankly is starting to trouble me deeply. It's causing us trouble too, Professor. All right, let's all just forget about the whole thing, let the storm die down, and permit this kid to lead a normal little boy's life. Such as devoting his talents to the handicapping of horses? Judge one. Lieutenant Rink is from the sheriff's office. Professor, your son has been supplying information to one of the most active betting rings we've uncovered in some time. Right here on this campus. Erasmus? What, what kind of information? He, he wouldn't know a racehorse from a jackass. His information is computed from published data. And he is far and away the most successful handicapper our department has ever encountered. Well, you must be joking about this. Kid's eight years old. You know Kenneth Taylor, don't you, a friend of your daughter's? I thought his name was Kenneth Darling. Taylor. And Orville Snob? No, I don't know him. They were suspended this morning after a confession in which they said your son had picked 17 straight winners for them. Little Raz? Did you or did you not know about this, Professor? Are you accusing me of using my own son as a toot? Toot? Well, isn't that what you call it? Racetrack toot? Tout. So after all these years... Well, this is the last straw. Here, give me a piece of paper. Now, look, Robert. Just I'll show you. Robert, you know, one of these days, I'm going to accept one of your resignations. And you're going to accept this one. 
And if I ever set foot on this campus again, I hope somebody shoots me. That's all. Robin, please. Excuse me, sir. Robert, you don't mean this. This is final. This time it's final. You stay out of this, Penny. This is between me and what's his name here. But, sir, believe me, I was and only you trying... you shut up, too. I want an explanation with this outrageous behavior. But, Daddy, Kenny's trying to explain. Why didn't they say something? Well, sir, I was you only... corrupted an innocent child. Now, get out, and I don't want to see you lurking around here anymore. Yes, sir. Where are you going? Well, you told me to leave. Not until you explain. Daddy, wait till Mom brings Raz home, and then we'll show you how it works. I want three dollars. But, Raz, you can't charge just to show Mom and Dad how you figure horses. Raz, this is just for practice. No bets. I don't care. Three bucks. Now, you see, the boy's tainted. But the only thing he ever spends money for is stamps. Well, you collect stamps, Raz? No, sir. Well, come on. Let's, let's get on with the exhibition. And no money, Raz. Pick a race. They have to feed him so many statistics. One race a day is about all he can do. But with Raz, one's enough. Okay, Razzle Dazzle, here we go. The sixth at Tanfran. Seven furlongs for maidens. Weather clear, track fast. Track record 121 and 1 fifth. First, Al's Rose. Last time out at the distance, third by two lengths in a time of 128. Second, Vesuvian. Last time out at the and distance. At the turn, it's Al's Rose on the inside between horses with Vesuvian and Apladon. Sister Milton. It's Vesuvian and Apladon, neck and neck. Where is Vesuvian she? Vesuvian is moving up an Apladon. Is pulling away from Al's Rose. Oh, I'll die. I'll just Al's simply Rose perish. Drops back as Crown Me moves in behind Apladon. Oh, dear. Now it's Crown Me and Apladon with Vesuvian. And now on the outside, the long shot five horse is making a move into the home stretch. It's Come on, Sister Melba. Sister Melba passing carry some home. Sister Melba and Al's Rose with tip up the favorite still trailing. Past the grandstand, it's Vesuvian fighting off Sister Melba. Come on, and Sister Melba! And as they Melba. finish under the whip, there goes Sister Melba. And she wins it by a head. What did I tell you? Raz hasn't missed yet. Good old Raz! Shh, let's hear what she paid. Sister Melba paid $58.20 to win. Yay! $24.80 to place and $16 to show. You see, sir, for a modest investment, we would now be ahead several hundred dollars. Don't you see, Dad? Raz is like diamonds on the sidewalk. All you've got to do is just bend down and pick them up. My interest is not for myself. Believe me, sir. I wish only to make enough money so I could marry Penny. A million dollars? Oh, it doesn't have to be a whole million. Well, what about your education? Oh, Daddy, with money like this, who needs an education? And I could get someone in to do the laundry. Well, Daddy? Well, what? Well, is it okay, sir, for Erasmus? Of course not. <laughs> What's wrong with it? Well, we can't use our child like that, honey, to gamble with. But is it immoral? Well, no. I can't say it's exactly immoral. Illegal? Illegal is purely a matter of geography. Well, then, what is it? It just doesn't feel right. If you agree that it isn't immoral or illegal, what's wrong with picking up some of those diamonds off the sidewalk? Well, it's just the... Honey, in there just a little bit ago, you you said about getting someone in to do the washing. Oh, darling, I didn't mean it to sound like censure. It's it just that I suddenly realized how, how tired I was of housework when the horse won and paid $58. No, I haven't even got a job. Robert. Oh, honey, I am. Uh, I'm sorry, but job or no job, I just cannot, in all conscience, turn Raz into a slot machine. I, I, all I ever really wanted is a son who likes at least a few of the things I like and play catch with me every once in a while, that's all. And if we can help him over this crisis, maybe he'll turn out to be a son like that.
I'll go and start the dinner. Do you know? Yes. Are you concerned? I mean, about my making the resignation final? When I married that tall, skinny Rhodes Scholar, I never expected champagne suppers every night. I have ways of preparing spaghetti that I haven't even tried yet. Robert, please explain to your daughter. What's the matter? I can't go to the prom. Why not? Well, how can I in last year's dress? I oh, Penny, I always thought that was the prettiest dress you ever had. Oh, with every other girl there and a new one. Well, I see. Well, you, you can't fix this one over or anything. Oh, now, Daddy, really, I just couldn't. All right, well, if you want a new dress, we'll get you a new dress, and it'll be the prettiest one there, too. Daddy. Well, we'll get you a new dress. Thank you. I just love you to death. Thank you. Sure. You know, Robert, Sometimes your impracticality goes too far. Well, now, if the dress means so much to her, dear, we'll just dip into the old nest egg. The old nest egg? Yeah, but that's what it's for, isn't it? Emergency. Have you any idea how much is left in the old nest egg? Exactly $18.35. Oh, well, that's not correct. Dear. You're so wrapped up in the humanities that sometimes you forget that a, a teacher's wife has to handle at least 52 emergencies a year. Why do you have to make such rash promises to Panny without consulting me? You must have realized why I brought her up here. Yes, yes, I'm looking back on it, I, yes. I, but I made the promise. I'm just going to have to make good on it. Well, how do you intend to do that? Well, I, I, it seems to me that years ago, d during the Roosevelt administration, didn't they have something called Social Security? When you're 65 years old, yes. No, Penny will be a grandmother by then. No, 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 but this had something to do with uh, unemployment insurance, too. It, you know, where you get paid for not working? It was sort of like the subsidies they give to farmers for not raising any crops. I, I, have, to, I have to check on that tomorrow. I'll, uh, I'll check on that. You're next, sir. Me? Well, step up. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll take it in small bills, please. That's how you'll get it, as soon as you meet the requirement. Well, I thought I had met the requirement. I, I'm unemployed. Well, first you go over there and fill out the forms, then come back. What forms are there? What well, job? this'll explain it. You see, we have to try and get you a job. Why? Well, this is the State Employment Bureau. I thought it was the Unemployment Bureau. Oh, no, no, no. It works like this. Uh, you're unemployed, and we try and get your job. Uh, but I've had a job. Now I'm here to get my money. <laughs> what kind of work do you do, anyway? I'm a poet. Oh, boy. This morning, so far, I've had an oyster opener, a balloonist, a circus fat lady who claims she went on a diet and lost her job, and now it got me a poet. <laughs> well, I am a poet. I'm, my name's Robert Leaf here. I'm in this anthology here. My name's in that book. Yeah. See this? My name's in this book. That don't make me a telephone. Now, you go over there and fill out the forms and bring them back like a good boy, huh? When do I get my money? Uh, not today. Uh, there'll be a two-week waiting period. Two weeks? Well, is the, the rule inflexible? I mean, don't you ever make any exceptions? Believe me, if I could make an exception, you'd be the first one I'd make it for, cutie. <laughs> Thank you. back there with a funny twitch in her eyes. She said I had to wait two weeks. Oh. You see, son, the government never waits to take your money, but they sure wash you around before they give some of it back. I've got some money. I, I, poor Pammy, now she's expecting that dress on Friday. Could I, I help you, Dad? Well, you mean quitting Dr. Volker? Oh, no, you don't have to worry about that. He, he can wait to be paid. I mean to buy Pammy's dress. I've got some money. Where'd you find that? I saved it up from doing problems. Here, you can buy Penny's dress with it. You, 
You know, you, you're a first-class little fella. You know that, Raz? You are. I... I've lost the key to the car. It's in there. Oh. Thank you, son. to see a dress. Would you help him, please? Yes, certainly. Oh, what would you like? Uh, well, we'd like to buy a dress for this young man's sister. Well, now, how old is the young lady? Well, well let's see. Uh, Penny is... Uh, 18. She is? You're in the right department. Did you have anything special in mind? Uh, yes, we'd like something pretty. Uh, something with... Uh, sort of... something pretty. <laughs> of course. But what type of dress? For school? Or party? A party is the school prom. We have several attractive styles and prom dresses. What size is she? Oh, uh, well, now, uh, our span is about there, wouldn't you say, son? About. Oh, is she uh, slender or buxom? Could you suggest approximately? She's skinny. Well, oh, no, she's not skinny. Well, oh, she's not buxom. No, she's not buxom, but she's panty is... Uh, uh, panty is uh, a, a sort of a darn good-looking young lady. Penny? <laughs> Why don't I just show you some things for your selection? And if we pick the wrong size, she can exchange it herself. Oh, well, that'd be fine. That's a good idea. Well, you do that. Now, if you'll have a seat, I'll be right with you. All right. Thank you. Looks very nice on you. Excuse me, please. I'll be right back. How about this one? No. You like that one? Well, mm -hmm. it's too short on you. Oh, uh, we're shopping. I see. I don't know, son. Uh, oh, miss, I, I, I beg your pardon, but I, I have a daughter, and we're trying to figure out a, a figure. Out, of course, she's not as big as... Yeah, but uh, uh, what is your size? I'm 36, 23, 35. That's 94. Is that right? I'm a 10. Well, she's 18. I mean, I'm size 10. Oh, and that, um, uh, well, I wonder, would, would I be presumptuous if I asked you to, if you, would you try that on? Just, just what is the meaning of this one? What, what do you mean? What's Accosting that? my niece in this manner. I, I'm not... Uh, he just asked me to try on a dress, Sugar. No, I wasn't accosting the lady. I distinctly saw you stop my niece. All I said to the girl was, you, you look familiar. I know you, don't I? Well, how do I know you know me? Leaf! Professor Robert Leaf! Well, that's right. <laughs> My dear Professor, forgive me, who doesn't know one of the world's great men of letters? Well... I'm Dr. Peregrine Upjohn. Dr. Upjohn. Now, perhaps you're familiar with my treatise on the Elizabethans, published when I taught at Telemue. No. Uh, well, no, Madison. Let me shake the hand that has written words noble enough to rank with Whitman. Well, you're too kind, sir. My dear, uh, this is Miss Eugenia Clove, my niece. How do you do, Miss Clove? I'm very pleased to meet you. And I do try on the dress for the professor. Oh. I'd be happy to. Oh, thank you. Now, you must yes, be... Yes, yes, this is my son, Erasmus. Yes, we've all read about this young man. <laughs> uh, Dr. Leaf, if you can forgive my outrage, will you do me the honor of taking tea? Well, I have to get the boy to the doctor at six. Uh, perhaps some other time you'd come over to the house. And... I'd be honored. Have you got a card? Uh, I'm afraid I don't have a card. Well, I, I could write the address right, down. Yes. Oh, fine. It's uh, right near here. Here we are. Several selections. I like the red one. So, I am the only one in the world who knows that uh, Erasmus Leaf is in love with Bridget Bardot. Hmm? No, sir. Well, who else knows? Bridget Bardot. How? I told her, in my letters. You write letters to Miss Bardot? Every night. All right. You better forget about her now. I can't. Try. Now, tell me, what did you do today? I went shopping. Oh, and what did you buy? A dress. Mm -hmm. 
You better wait out here. Schnell! Yes, Doctor? Please send me in here, the boy's mother. She isn't here today, sir. His father's here. That's even better. The father. Bridget Bardo. Bridget Bardo. Yes, sir, you may be colorblind, son, but you're a green-blooded, all-American boy. The professor and Rash should have been home an hour ago. <laughs> I don't know, you... You put a father and son together, they're... They're liable to go out and celebrate the fact that they're men. <laughs> and that's worth celebrating. Especially these days when so many women wear pants. <laughs> The slender birch in which the linnet nests is a promise made in quiet splendor. Heard above the drums of thunder, for silence is the shriek of life. Well, well, thank you, sir. Ah, my dear Leaf, much must be granted to the man whose soul and spirit united to give birth to those lines. Oh. You know, there's, there's a music in your gentle husband's work that's to be found nowhere else in American poetry. I'm very kind, sir. You're very kind. He's simply been showering you with praise, Robert. The moment we parted company, Professor, I realized that fate had destined us to meet. Oh? Would you like some tea, darling, and then Dr. Upjohn can explain what we've been discussing. He's in, in the same position that you're in. You mean you're out of work? Mm, precisely. The Elizabethan section at Pelham University was felled by an enlargement of the science department for experimental work on the anti-anti-anti-missile program. Is that so? I, I thought it was different in the East. No, worse, sir, if anything. In one New England university, I'm informed, the entire fine arts department is now housed in a room over a local drugstore. Isn't that right? Lena, it's exactly what I've been saying all along. Yes, dear. The human race unquestionably is headed right back for the caves and the treetops. Unquestionably. Unless, unless, sir, you accept my alternative and we fight back. Well, fight back how? Through a resistance movement, Professor. A counter campaign. To be specific, through a leaf foundation. Well, what do you mean over leaf well, foundation? Well, Dr. Upjohn proposes a foundation dedicated exclusively to the arts and humanities, giving scholarships. Hundreds upon thousands of scholarships. A veritable army, sir. You see? Uh-huh. Well, that's a very interesting idea, Doctor. Very interesting uh, sort of call to action. I, uh, yes, and uh, very flattering for me, too. Uh, of course, uh, who's going to pick up the check? We would, sir. The foundation. With what? Erasmus, darling. The boy's astonishing talents can be harnessed for the welfare of generations to come. Well, how? Now, you admitted that it wasn't immoral and that it can be, be done perfectly Race legally. Race horse picking? Race horse picking? Lena, <coughs> I've told you that I am absolutely put my foot down on anything. On... I, what is that? But, uh, doctor, this is a very commendable project, but to involve a small boy in... in what, what the devil is going on out there? Lena! Hey, Professor, look! The torches! Looks like we already have an army, Doctor. There he is! Come on, guy! Come on! Professor Leaf, sir, uh, on behalf of the students of your English poetry your, of section... Of your English poetry section, uh, Professor, we hereby petition you to return to the university and fill the void that now exists. Yeah! We want uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, uh, first let me thank you for making an old accordion player feel like a young football hero. <laughs> 
this display is very gratifying. It's, a, it's very, uh, very touching. But uh, in the words of Shakespeare, everyone can master a grief but he that has it. No, come back, Professor. Yeah! We want peace. We want peace. No, we I, want peace. I naturally we would enjoy peace. returning to the campus. I, I just, uh, it, just here, here, as I, as I look into your eager faces, I somehow see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other young people, people not as fortunate as you, and. Dad, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> As a matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, I have just been asked to participate in a project, and I suddenly realize I just can't reject it. In, in association with the, Dr. Peregrine Upjohn here, we are about to establish a foundation which will provide scholarships in the arts and the humanities for deserving students who can't otherwise pay their way through college. My heartiest congratulations, my dear Leaf. You are indeed one of nature's noble women. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, through the good offices of your beloved poet and mentor, we shall endow a veritable army to give challenge to the ugly hordes of space-age plumbers and slide room manipulators our schools are turning out to take over the world. Yeah! Isn't it wonderful? Yes, darling. But please don't invite them all for dinner. Just think of the youngsters these scholarships will help, honey. Just think of it. And of course, the whole thing's got to be run on a purely business-like basis. Up, John's going to, he's going to take care of that. I'm going to work on the, the plan itself, you know, like finding the right kids in high school, things like that. Oh, we're going to make up beautifully, darling, even on a limited salary. Oh, no salary. No salary. We agreed on that. Neither one of us are going to take salary from the foundation, only expenses. Expenses, then, as long as you're happy. You know, everything is working out so wonderfully, everything. Panny's dress and the Leaf Foundation and Dr. Volker. Dr. Volker, I, I just can't get over that. How about that? Isn't it, isn't it wonderful to know how normal Braz is? You know, and this influenced my decision as far as working for this foundation is concerned. And, but Volker called me into his office, and, and now that we know that he's a perfectly healthy... Uh, well, Jeff, would you let me finish what I... You're finished. And in his last race, third, in the time of 1.29. Now, uh, today he carries a weight of 119 pounds. Well, that's the lot, my boy. If you have the computation soon enough, We'll have time to wager on the eighth race at Santa Anita. You bore me. Son. Oh, that's the name of the horse. You bore me. Post position number three. The morning odds are five to two. Well, hardly a long shot. But we have to begin the fun for the Leaf Foundation somewhere, don't we? Well, now that we have the selection, what, what do we do? Well, because I'm as innocent in these matters as you are, my dear Leaf, I've taken the liberty of engaging an accountant familiar with matters of the turf. Uh, Mr. Christopher Argyle, please. He's associated with a large firm of auditors in Oakland. Uh, Mr. Argyle? Have you ahead? Yeah, it's for you. Yeah, I'm busy. I got coffee money going on this game. It's up, John. Up, John. Yeah, Johnny? Uh, Mr. Argyle, I wonder if you'd be kind enough to place a wager on a horse in the eighth race at Santa Anita this afternoon. Well, my credit ain't good for more than two minutes, you know, Johnny Boy. Oh, uh, thank you, sir. A ten dollar bet is an excellent beginning. After all, the Ford Foundation started humbly enough with just old Henry and a monkey wrench. I did. You're there, huh? Uh, okay, Doctor, what's the name of the beast? You bore me. You bore me. Ten on the nose. I'll move on it right now. Uh, thank you, Mr. Argyle. Right, Doctor. <laughs> Ten, twenty, five, six, seven, eight. Not bad for a start, huh? <laughs> Slowly but surely, my dear Mulehead, we we'll work our way up to majestic levels of investment. Town Club. Abladon. 
Bandito. 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 I'm so happy I ever met you. You're such a sport. I can see how happy well, my little one. You're overflowing with joy. Oh. <laughs> Go powder your nose, my dear. Why is it? Oh. Oh, sure, sport. Now, what is it? Hmm? Oh, troubles, Phil. Today's long shot drove another book under. That six bookies we busted this week, Johnny. I tell you the words out. I can't get any action covered no place. It was inevitable. Well, you'll just have to go to the track and bet the machine. Yeah, but Johnny, you... you I know it's legal, but we can't quit now. Yeah, I guess you're right. All of this on number 11. <laughs> Yes, sir. Well, wait for us. Yeah, we'll be right down. Terry, you put something on now. Oh, Professor, I'm covered. Compass, come on. Come on. Let's go. Well, we've got a good day for it. For me, Mr. Ruby? There is today, Raz. It's from France. From France? That's a fine thing a man for deciding his ship before it's even launched. Captain, can I see you? I don't know. That's a great moment for yeah. the captain. You are hereby appointed master of the good ship Pacific Prime. Hey, hey, what are you waiting for, boy? Hey, into the drink with it. Here, give it to me. I'll have show you. Now, she's launched. <laughs> there she goes. She sank. <laughs> what a shame. And after all that work, yeah. She can sank. we go now, Dad? Can I talk to you, Dad? No, can no, I no, see you? No, no, well, let's no. see if we can't get it. Come on. Oh, I'll do, George. Well, you can't wait in here. It's three fathoms deep. But Dad, this is important. Oh, all right. I guess we have a summit meeting. All right, son. What's all the mysterious excitement? Will you read this for me? Can't you read it? B.B. Bridget Bardot. Well, son, you never told me you corresponded with her. You never asked me. Oh, I, I, I never thought about it. Well, you wrote to her, huh? Every night. Every night? Will you read it to me? It's in French talk. Let's see. Ah, uh, mon petit chéri, Erasmus, my dear little Erasmus. I have before me all your sweet letters. I have never received such lovely letters from a little boy before. And I am too touched by your, I am so touched by yours that it makes me uh, triste, it was sad. I have not written to you before uh, now, how beautiful they are. I wish I could meet you. Uh, uh, oh, I wish that someday you could come to see me. Write to me again, and always remember, je t'adore, Bibi. Well, well, that's a very sweet letter, son. Can I? Can you what? Can I go visit her? Oh, well, it, 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 it's a very far away, son. But she said come, didn't she? Well, I know, but the, the Paris, France, that's all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. And that's all right. I don't mind. And she did invite me. Well, yeah, well, I, I'll certainly think about it, Graz, but... Uh, 
uh, I can't promise anything, but after all, a trip like this costs an awful lot of money. I have $11 left. Oh, it'd take more than that, son. A lot more than that. I can make some more. Oh. And make Dr. Upjohn pay me for picking those horses. Oh, uh, no. No, Raz, you see, now that money is for our foundation, for a really important purpose. And we only use it for the absolutely essential expenses. And making a trip to Paris to see Bridget Bardot just is not an absolutely essential uh, expense. Well, uh, son, you, let me think about this now. You, you uh, let me think about it. Huh? We'll see. We'll see. That's a very nice letter, Raz. Now, come now, lad. We haven't all day, you know. Raz, Raz, come on now, come on. I'm thinking. What are you thinking about? Bridget Bardot. What race is she in? No, th this is the actress. You said I could go see her. We've got work to do, young man. This is no time to skip off to the movies. He's not talking about the movies. You promised. No, no, son, I didn't promise. I said we'd see. Now, see here. We've got only half an hour to make the feature race. Now, let's run through the entries once more. No. What do you mean, no? He means no. When he says no, he means no. Well, does this mean he's not going to select today's horse? Not until I go see her. See who? Bridget Bardot, I told you, this boy has an invitation to go to Paris to see Miss Bridget Bardot. <laughs> this is utter nonsense, Leaf. A young kid of ten years old. Right? Eight. Well, if you want to be ten, you'd better pick a horse, young man. Now, wait a minute here, Up John. Now, if you're going to take that kind of an attitude, you're asking for a lot more trouble than you may be able to handle. Now, what's gotten into you, Rob? I'd like to know what's gotten into you. Well, my dear colleague, we've a great deal of money involved here, and Mr. Argyle is waiting for a horse. And, and that's another thing. I'd like to meet Mr. Argyle one of these days. I'd like to meet Bridget Bardot. Well, maybe we will, son. Maybe we just will. Come on. Where are you going? Come on. I'm going home. And I'm going to find some way to get this boy to Paris. Dr. Upjohn. Oh, forgive this intrusion, dear friends, but I have to come. For you, dear lady, and for you, Robert, a most noble grape. And where are the children? I have candy for them. His and her. Oh, that's very thoughtful of you. I hope I'm in time to apologize for my behavior this afternoon, Robert. I, I was hasty and selfish. But after thinking it over, I realize how important it is that Erasmus keep his rendezvous with Miss Bardot. So by all means... Well, just a moment, Doctor. Are you suggesting that Erasmus goes to Paris? I am, indeed. But Robert, you, you can't give in to a child's whim. Whim? Honey, this is an obsession. For the sake of the Foundation, we must pack him off to Paris forthwith. Alone? His father will take him. Oh, well, hold on. Now, how can we do that? And the cost would... Oh, damn the cost, sir. Erasmus is our most valued asset. Indeed, he and my adding machine are our only assets. <laughs> if the machine broke down, we'd have it repaired. Well, you mean we can take the funds from the Foundation? And fly to Paris. Behold, two jet plane round-trip tickets to Orleyfield, Paris. Wow. Well, I... Well, honey, what do you think? Why not? Why not? Paris, eh? Paris. Bridget Barneau. Take me to this address. Bon. This is a distance. I'm going to telephone my loving wife. She will be waiting. But it's Bridget Bardot's house. Baby, my wife can wait. Look! Stop! It's her! Over there! 
No, monsieur, that is not our baby. In France, many girls try to look like baby. This is it. This is the house of Brigitte Bardot. Permettez, monsieur. Bonjour, euh, je suis Robert Leaf et voici mon fils Erasmus. You have an appointment? Oui. Uh, oh, uh, you have an appointment. Yeah, I, I have an appointment with uh, Mademoiselle Bardot. My name is Leaf. Ah oui. Entrez, Monsieur Leaf. Non, 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 Mademoiselle will be here in a minute. Merci. Thank you. I'm scared, Dad. Oh, now don't worry, son. Everything's going to be fine. Oh, look over here. Yeah. Hello. My name is Leaf. Which one is Erasmus? I'm Chante, Mademoiselle Bardo. Mais vous parlez français? C'est merveilleux. Comme je suis contente de vous connaître. Je vous remercie pour toutes les gentilles lettres que vous m'avez envoyées. Oh, enchanté, Mademoiselle Bardot. Uh, yes, well, I, I, I'm afraid that's the extent of his vocabulary. Oh, then we shall speak in English. Thank you for your pretty letters. I'm delightful to meet you. You are the father of the boy? Yes, yes, uh, Robert Leaf. Robert, Robert Leaf? Not the American poet. Oh. Oh, you, you familiar with my work? The songbird's flute. The drum beat of the rain. The sound of wings against the night. All joy to put my heart to flight. There. Well, I couldn't be more flattered. Flattered. Oh, flatty, flattered. Oh, flatty. <laughs> it is a pity we have so little time to visit. Yes, yes, but, but this visit belongs to Erasmus. Ah, come, we'll have some chocolate. Oh, Sit uh, down. There you are, son. Monsieur? Thank you. Or do you prefer tea? Hmm. Huh? Oh. Well, uh, more chocolate? He doesn't speak very much, does he? Is your son always so silent, even at home? Uh, no, mademoiselle. Il, il est simplement trop uh, overwhelmed. You, you see, it means much more to him than you realize. Erasmus, have you lost your tongue? Don't you want to say something, Raz? Uh, just a few words? Well, I'd like to ask my... Mademoiselle Bardo for a favor. Well, what's that? Could I have your autograph? <laughs> you mean you came from California all the way only to get my autograph? I'm sure you can do better than that. I have a new camera. Très joli. And your papa will make a picture. Oh, oh, well, I'm, I'm afraid I'm not very good at this sort of thing. But it's very simple. You, you, regard, you, you look three there, uh -huh, huh? Uh -huh. and you press this button, uh -huh. and we say cheese. Okay? Uh -huh. Come on. 
Why cheese? That's what they say. Cheese, fromage. Uh -huh. Uh huh. Oh, there you are. Look here. Look at your papa. Oh, well, uh, oh, is everybody ready? Now, Raz, look this way. Look here. All right, now, here we we'll go. One, two, three, fromage. Did you smile? Yes, Miss Pardo. I think so. Good. Maintenant, on va développer yeah. la photo. Merci. Il y en a pour une minute. Oh, now, there, Raz, you'll have a picture of the two of you. You can prove to your friends at school you really made a dream happen out loud. Even if they never believe me, I'll always know it happened. Uh-huh, yeah. This. Yes. There we are. Look. Well, that's amazing. Well, I declare. Well, isn't that... Uh, look at that, Raz. Now I'll take Erasmus to meet Sophie. Excuse, please, us, Papa. Yes. Comes out of this. Uh, where, where are you taking him? To my bedroom. We'll be back. <laughs> you to take home. And you don't have to speak French to understand this little thing. This is Sophie. Sophie, this is Erasmus. And she has given me some lovely kittens. Kittens? Yes, little dogs. You make friends with her, and she will let you pet her kitten. There. Hmm. I think she likes you. Now, look. You like it? Oh, yes, I do. Like it? Me? Yes. Oh, Dad! Look what Miss Bardo wants me to keep. Oh, can I keep him, please? Okay, oh. Papa. Well, I... Yes, I, it's very nice, of course. Oh, boy, I'm gonna call her Bridget. <laughs> that one, you better call Charles. Well, <clears throat> I, well, well, I guess we've taken up enough of your time, Miss Bardot, and I can't thank you enough for what you've done for my son. Thank you for your poetry. And thank you for what your son has done for me. I hope to visit you someday in California. And you will take me to Disneyland. I've never been there either. He has never been to Disneyland. And he comes to see me. <laughs> oh, sweet. Forget her, never, ever. She's the most beautiful lady in the whole world. Remember me? Lieutenant Rink? Oh, yes, the dean's office. Yes. You know this man, Professor. No. No, I never saw him before. Well, we have him in custody, Professor. And he claims he works for the Robert Lee Foundation. His name's Chris Argyle. Argyle? Oh, yeah, we have an associate named Argyle. Yes, he's an accountant. Well, this one's a no accountant, if you'll uh, forgive the pun. He's a cheap confidence man. Sorry to have disturbed you, sir. Thanks for your cooperation. Not at all. Not at all. Huh. 
Argyle. Excuse me. Lena, uh, Dr. Upjohn's just been telling me about poor Mr. Argyle. Who? Our auditor. He's worked himself into a nervous collapse. He'll be confined for quite a while. Six months. At least. And we've decided to take one last crack at this thing. In other words, put the entire fund for the foundation on the biggest long shot that Erasmus can pick out for us. It's after the salutary effect of his visit to Miss Bardot, Erasmus appears sharper than ever. Shall we begin now, Robert? Well, not yet, Doctor. Our dinner's almost ready. You'll stay, won't you? I'd be delighted. Your spaghetti is delicious. Thank you. And after you, Doctor. And in his last race, first by a head in a time of 1.10, track clear and fast, paid $3.30. And that's it. Now, have you got it all, Rose? Mm-hmm. Well, son, what's the verdict? Which is the most sure by a long shot? Come on. Concentrate, Raz. Fromage. 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 I don't recall any horse name from cheese. French for cheese, of course. Here it is. Bless it. <laughs> six at Bay Meadows. Well, you're right. The six at Bay Meadows, French cheese. Great God in the mountains, a 60 to one shot. Oh, Robert, this is the one bet I'm going to enjoy making. I think I'll go out to the racetrack myself this time. Three minutes till post time. Kenneth, what's the number of our horse? Eight, and look at those odds, 70 to one. Just wait till the professor and Upjohn start putting their bets down. And what's the odds on that four change? They're changing now. They're going up instead of down. I guess they haven't started to bet yet. If you'll excuse me, I'll go see what's happening. Of course, the odds will drop appreciably, but even at 10 or 12 to one, we should have done that. Scott Huntington gets on the number eight horse, my good man, and I'll tell you when to stop. Yes, sir. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's one thousand. They started to bet now. Hope they get it all down before the race starts. The odds are changing again. Now that's a lot. Let's go. Even a ten to lunch, you make us well fit. There it is, Raz. There's the horse going to make our foundation come true. Oh, you darling, darling French cheese. Huh? That's your horse, dearest. French cheese. Look, now it's eight to one. That's not the one I picked. What, what was that you said? I didn't pick a horse called French cheese. The horses are at the gate. But, Raz, you said fromage. I did? Oh. <laughs> the top end grows on it. There they go. American made, breaking on top, pink road away, second box. Is there in New York, fourth, Ozzy's pal, and once too often. Nearing the far turn, it's a pink road on the rail in front of Nack, American made, second length and a half, box, and uh, New York. At the top of the stretch, it's a pink coat. In front by a length and a half, American made second, and from far back and playing French cheese. He's fifth, he's fourth, he's third. French cheese! Come on, French cheese! French cheese is now second. But it's pink coat in front by three quarters of length. French cheese on the outside under the whip. It's pink coat in front. Hold it. 
I'd like your name and address, please. How dare you? Get your clammy hooks off me. Treasury Department, Bureau of Internal Revenue. We have to make certain that income is declared. There's nothing to declare. This money belongs to a tax-free institution. Professor's right. This is the property of the Robert Leaf Scholarship Foundation. Thank you very much, Robert. Oh, well, don't thank me, Dean Sawyer. Thank Dr. Upjohn here. It was all his idea. My pleasure, Doctor. How good of you to endow Robert's school so handsomely. Oh, uh, ma'am, the, uh, the press is here. I want to take some pictures. Just step up here. There. Now, say fromage. Fromage. Thank you. 